All right, welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. We are out here with the wood pile. This is, uh, behind me is uh, kind of where I've been stacking wood throughout the season this year. Uh, I collect wood all year round. It, it just really depends on uh, whenever it's available to me. Some wood I get off our property here, but most of the wood that I get comes from friends, family, neighbors, uh, people in the community um, that you know have trees cut down, want me to cut down a tree, uh, are having a tree cut down by a tree company and they want me to take the wood, uh, whatever the situation might be. And so generally it just gets, just gets dumped back here. Um, some of it is cut to length. It, you know, whenever I'm there, I have time uh, off-site to cut stuff into my length. Generally about 16 to 18 inches is what my wood stove will take. So I'll cut them into that length. Uh, but a lot of the stuff is not. A lot of the stuff I just, you know, we're hauling it away for somebody. And so I'm not going to spend all day cutting it into perfect logs out at someone's house. I just throw it in the trailer as big as sections I can carry and get it out of there. And that's the, that's the job. And so generally it'll get stacked here. Some of this stuff is, has been dead for years. Some of it is oak. Some of it is elm. Some of it is cherry. Some of it is maple. Some of it is junk wood. It's all mixed together, but we're going to burn it all. So, so this is the beginning of kind of prepping for fall. It's already August. I can't believe it. And we're going to be, uh, we're going to be heating with wood in a few months. So, so let's get our saw ready and, uh, get in here, cut some things to length, do some splitting. So we're using the rancher today, the 455. My steel saw needs a, a tune-up, so I'll be uh, taking you guys along for, for that probably. It's the first tune-up I've done on it since I've owned it. And so it'll need a, a little bit of uh, cleanup and stuff. And these are on here good. So one thing I don't like about this saw, it comes with this really short bar tool. And uh, the steel bar tool is, is real long, it's, it's nicer. so. So we're going to put a new chain on here. Today we're going to grease the bar and uh, just get ready for the season. Generally I buy a new chain every year, every season. Uh, it depends on the, the time. Uh, we'll probably do, do a good cleanup on this another time. This is the, the chain that I always get, um, the H47. This is a good chain. These things last last a long time. It's not the anti-kickback one, so you get a really good bite on that wood. And I, I really like that uh, rather than those anti-kickback chains. So. These chains will also stretch out over time. And I've had that happen too. Especially if you don't, if you, you tension your chain too much, it, it gets heated up and stretches and stretches and stretches, and then you end up running out of uh, tension space on your bar, and you've got a chain that's that's loose at your max tension uh, space. So. Not all bars have this. Uh, my, my steel doesn't have this, but this bar needs lubrication. So there's actually a little lubrication point here. And you just squirt a couple of squirts of grease in there. So you can start seeing it come out the edges. And it looks like it went in both sides pretty good, but we'll do this side too. Give it a little tighten. I don't want to tighten it too much because I don't want to stretch that chain out. Should be right about there somewhere. So there's a couple different ways to save your chain. If you're, you know, cutting on the ground, I'm cutting in a pile here. I'm, I might just go through this pile and just start cutting in the pile uh, rather than doing it on here. But this is just one thing that you can do. 
anytime your chain hits the dirt, you're gonna hit rocks, you're gonna hit, you know, it's grit. You're basically just, just wearing your chain down. And so you want your chain to last long and less sharpening, you wanna keep it out of the dirt. So if you have, uh, have something like this, a pallet, so I have measured on my chain here, you know, this is where my 16, 18 inches, I wanna be in this range somewhere with my logs. So I'm looking for a slat hole so, and I know if I just let this hang over the edge just a little bit and I cut right through this, this slat that I'm going to be in that range somewhere. And, and I've got some play. I've got some leeway. So if I just throw the logs on here, I can cut right between this slat. I'll, I'll be able to cut right through each log and get my perfect size. Another thing you can do is cut halfway through your logs if they're sitting on the ground. Just cut halfway through, then roll it over, and then finish the other side of your cut. That way you're never getting your saw in the dirt. So That should give me a pretty good uh, good start on some things to split here. But uh, every time I get the chainsaw, you know, one of my favorite things about doing chainsaw videos is the comments that I get. Um, you know, I, I <laughs> it's always the the silliness always comes out, and uh, people always have something to say about how I use a chainsaw. So let me address a couple things. <laughs> this is a brand new chain, so I, hopefully no one will say your chain's dull, because that that happens a lot of times. Your chain's too dull. You need to learn how to sharpen a chain. Um, it's brand new out of the box, so that's not, you know, hopefully, hopefully that, that calls that concern. The other thing is, uh, a lot of people talk about how I use the chainsaw. So generally what I do is I use the, the spikes here, uh, when I'm cutting larger logs. Now in this case, I, I was in a pile, and so I'm using the, the bottom half of the bar, or the top half of the bar, I guess you'd say, um, to cut through these logs. I'm trying to stay back away from the blade, and, I, and away from the chain, and I want to make sure that I get in here and get these, these little limbs cut out of this pile. When I'm cutting logs on the ground, I use these these spikes, and generally what I'll do is I'll, I'll lock that you know right up against it, and I'll and I'll feather that cut through. So I'll continue to to get that fork and use the leverage of the saw back here to pull that chain through as much as the engine can handle. I go full throttle, and uh, and I I give it as much as the, the the saw can handle, as much as the engine will take. I'll keep feathering it through there until I get through the log. That is how. Um, how I've been taught to cut, that's how I cut, that's always worked well for me. Uh, it, it requires the least amount of effort, you're using the leverage of the handle way back here and that pivot point right on the, uh, on the, the spikes to, to rotate that through the, through the log and, and that, that works best for me. So if you have a different way of cutting, I've seen lots of videos of other people cut different ways and, and that's totally fine, uh, that's, just, that's just how I do it. So, so let's jump in and uh, we'll grab some of these here. I've got a bunch on the other side as well by my splitter. I, I've, uh, the splitter's out here by the pile and what I'll do is, instead of dragging the heavier logs over to my wood stack and then splitting them, I will split them here close to the pile and then carry the lighter pieces that are easier to load and unload and the kids can help me with that. So I will uh, get this all split up and in a pile and then we'll get the kids out here to uh, load that in the stack.
said this before but whenever I stack uh, whenever I stack wood I stack different sizes and also I try to get a good mix of wood so I've got elm in here a couple pieces of the cottonwood in here there's some oak in here some cherry and this will all get mixed together and as I pull from this stack I'll get a good mix of hard and soft wood and you can tell what's what. So if I need to get a quick fire started, you can throw a couple pieces of cottonwood in there and the cottonwood will fire right up. And then I can throw some cherry or some oak or some elm on top of that. I'm sure that someone is making the comment that aren't, you know, you can't burn soft woods in there. You don't do that because you're gonna burn your house down. Well. I think that what I have found is that as you burn different kinds of wood, as long as you get nice hot fires going and you check your chimney often, I tend to clear clean ours out a couple times a year, a couple times a season. So clean it out every couple months, maybe two, three times a season. And I, I think it's fine. Well, we're getting there. We got uh, got a pretty decent amount of uh, of wood so far this year, already split and ready to go. This stuff's uh, this stuff's pretty dry, so I think we'll be good to burn that in uh, October, November, and then we usually start at this end, and then I'll work my way all the way down. All of this junk's got to get cleaned out of here, and then we'll stack wood all the way to the to the wall here. So uh, I'd stack them about seven feet tall, and I think it's twelve feet long. I don't really measure face cords or anything. I just know that if I stack wood in here this tall all the way across, that should get me through just about the year. Uh, I'll probably need an extra face cord or so, just depending on how much we burn. But, but that's pretty much a year's worth. So this section needs to be filled with wood every year. And then once I get ahead, if that ever happens, I'll, uh, I'm gonna clean this little stall area out and then I'll start stacking wood along this side too. So this whole section of the barn will be filled with wood and it'll all be nice and seasoned and hopefully we can get a year ahead at some point. Heating with wood is certainly a year round affair. Uh, I don't like to do this much in the summertime, although I often find myself doing just that. Uh, it's much harder to, you know, the heat and the mosquitoes and, and the sun and trying to get in the woods and cut stuff out and you got rain, storms come through, all that kind of stuff. It's a lot harder to deal with wood and process wood in the summertime. Uh, so being a, a year ahead is, is, has always been the goal. And uh, I think this is the closest that I've ever been to that. The amount of wood that I have there, I have a lot of dead wood, a lot of dry wood, a lot of stuff that's ready to burn this year. 
and I've got a lot of stuff that will be ready for next year. Um, so that is the most amount of hardwoods that I've ever had on the property. And so I'm hoping that as I process through that, get that stacked in here, that I will fill this and start to fill the other section there so that I can start to get into next year's supply. Uh, and I've and, and still getting you know continuing to get wood and bring it back to the property as it becomes available So hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, tagging along for some wood processing today uh, I get a lot of comments on how every time I bring out the chainsaw man, there's a lot of comments So uh, I'd love to hear from you guys though. What do you think? Uh, how do you deal with wood? Uh, are you a year ahead? How many years supply of wood do you have if you're a wood burner out there? I'd love to hear hear the experts uh, and hear how far ahead you've gotten because I know it's quite an accomplishment. So don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. And of course, we'd love to have you tag along on the SSL Family Dad channel. If this is your first time here, hit the subscribe button. We do all kinds of fun stuff around here, DIY things, building things and gardening and, and uh, wood processing and heating with wood, anything for a sustainable lifestyle. So we'd love to have you tag along and share your experience with us. So as always guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.